Hi everyone. Now today I am going to go over some of the basic input functionality for GIS users. I want to basically explore the importing of raster and vector data into R for use in various spatial analysis applications. So this is just getting the the process imported and reconciled spatially so that you can do further analysis and mapping and so on. So there are a lot of libraries that might be useful if you're doing this kind of thing, but the two we're going to work with today are RGDAL and Raster. So you have to install these two packages prior to running this, and then once you've done that, install the libraries. Now, in GIS, there's two fundamental data types. And if you don't know about these, you should probably read up on them or acquaint yourselves with them. But if you're doing, if you're watching this video, you probably already know this. But one is the vector data type, spatial data type, and the other is a raster uh, spatial data type. And they contain different kinds of data, but we often use them together. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to import a vector data set. And this is a vector data set of the country of Honduras, and it's got all the little administrative regions of Honduras plotted out into areas. So you have a map that's basically comprised of these complex polygons that make up the administrative municipalities of Honduras. The file that I'm importing is stored as a shape file, which is this ESRI or ESRI standard geographical data file. It's very commonly found on the internet. So to import it, we use this read OGR function, and that will import the shape file provided that it has all the necessary components to it. It imports it without any difficulty, and we can look at the some of the details of that imported file just by typing the name of it. A couple things to look at right away. This line here says features. This would be the number of polygons rendered and contained within it. So it's made up of a lot of different data, but one of the fundamental things we're looking at, if it's a spatial polygon data frame, which is the type of data this is, the data structure that this is, is how many polygons are there? How many of these administrative areas are there? And there's 298 of them. Another thing to look at is the coordinate reference system. This is the system for projecting the data onto this screen and onto the, this two-dimensional surface that we use in mapping data. And there's some other information specifically related to the, the actual variables contained in the data set and some of the examples of the actual data themselves. Now let's say the first thing I notice is that I don't like this particular coordinate reference system. So I might want to re-project these data into a different coordinate reference system. To do that, one of the options is to transform it from one reference system to another. And using this function here, SP transform, I can transform it. I can give it a different ellipsoid or a different uh, datum here. So if I run this again, you'll see that the projection has changed, that I now have a different the projection is actually different. But I'm going to go back to the original here. WG, WGS84. Now, that's ve vector data. If I want to plot this, now there's a lot of ways to plot data in R. If I want to, if I want to plot these data in a way that looks attractive and I want to control the input and output, there are better tools in this, but you can actually plot the map this way too. So now we see a map of Honduras. So we've got a map, we've plotted out, now I want to import some raster data as well. So here we go. I've got a path again. This time I'm using a different function to import it. I'm using a function that's in the raster library called raster, and this imports the raster layer into R. And once it's imported, as in the case with the vector layer, I can take a look at the contents of it by just typing in the name of the layer that I created, this, this raster layer. And so I'm getting information. I'm getting the coordinate reference system. I'm getting the, the extent of the raster layer, which is a, a rectangular shape. And these are the, the extents, the, the x min, x max, y min, and y max are basically a bounding box around this raster layer. It tells me the number of dimension, the number of cells, how many cells in the x-axis or the row axis and how many in the y-axis. So the, sorry, the, the, the y-axis would be the row and the x-axis would be the, 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 um, the column. So this is just some basic information contained within the raster. And I can also project this layer the same way I projected 
the one above, I can just, except it's a different projection function when you're working with raster data, you typically use a projection tools within the raster layer, a library, or the, within the raster library or, or raster appropriate library. So here we go, we can plot out this map, and you notice that it looks fundamentally different. It doesn't contain these discrete entities anymore because it's a raster rather than a uh, vector layer. And I want to import another raster layer because I want to demonstrate something here. So, so far we've imported two data sets. It hasn't really been a problem. And I'm going to import another raster layer, and I'm going to plot that. And we're going to notice a difference between these two raster layers. Now, this raster layer has different bounds. It's at the same region of the world. It's, bo it's both, both have a, are of Honduras, but they're different in terms of the extent. Right? They're very different. So let's say the first thing I want to do is actually mask one of these layers so that I can clip out all the regions within the land layer that are not also in the DEM layer, layer. So this mask function will accomplish that. The first argument of the mask function is the name of the layer that's going to be clipped off. And the second argument is the layer that's going to be used to mask it, which can be a raster or vector um, uh, layer. So by doing this, I can clip it, clip off all the areas that are not part of the Hondur the within the spatial extent of the the Honduras vector layer, and I'm going to re and I'm going to output. I should have just for the sake of consistency here. I should go like this. I, I'm going to output that into a new layer, which uh, a new raster layer. So now the raster layers will both kind of conform to the same spatial area. So you can see it here that this has now been, I've clipped off all that extra stuff, and I've used this layer to do the clipping. So this is the layer that's kind of given me the, the constraints of this new layer. So now that's great. Now let's say I want to do some analysis that involves combining data from the two raster layers. Well, there's one prerequisite to that, and that is you have to make sure that the raster layers have some sort of semblance of um, comparability, that they're reconcilable, spatially speaking. And the key to that often is ensuring that the two raster layers have the same spatial resolution, that they have the same grid resolution. And we can look at the dimensions of these layers and see that they do not have the same resolution. There's a different number of cells, and the cells are of different size. That makes comparing them a little bit difficult. In many applications, it would, it's, it's not possible. It requires a lot of kind of extra processing. So what we can actually do is very easily combine, um, use one of the layers to basically resample the information in the other layer. And the resampling process is very simple. It basically, there's a number of different uh, ways you can do it, but you're basically taking information from one layer and you're assigning it to another layer at the same resolution. Um, um, well, so, well, the information is from the same layer but you're basically taking cells, the resolution of another layer, and combining that. It's combining the data, or, or like drilling down or recreating the data according to the resolution parameters of another layer. Uh, it, it's hard to actually describe this. It's easier to see it, but I don't have a, a graphic to show you right now. But the basic idea is that you're resampling it so that at the end of the day, once it's been resampled this way, you're going to have a layer that, sh that has the same resolution as the layer that you're using to do the resampling. So here we've got now the DM layer and the land layer have the same spatial resolution. The DM layer still contains the same information it did before, it's just now at a different resolution than, than it was. So it didn't use the land data to do the resampling, but it used the resolution of the land data to do the resampling. So it, the data are all the same, it's just that now the two DMs have or the two raster layers have the same resolution for easier further analysis. So that gives you basically an introduction of importing raster and vector data, some of the basic things and some of the processing that you might need to do if you import raster layers that have different resolution. See you next time.